Hello guys, West Country Explorer here. Now, as you can clearly see, I'm not on location today. I'm doing a video at home. And I'm going to be talking about some highwaymen. More specifically, highwaymen related to the robber stone. Now, what it was, it was about, it had been Easter time. 2022 I think it was I was off on a bit of a cycle ride cycle tour going up north and very on the first day of my journey I'd like gone across Salisbury Plain gone up just gone past West Lavington on on one of the main roads as I'm cycling along I spotted on the other side of the road in the verge is a stone like this like on a monument, a monumental stone. Now, it's one of those things, if you're in a car, it'd be very easy to drive past this stone. Now, fortunately for me, I was on my bicycle, so very easy for me to stop and have a look see at this stone and see what it was all about. And it was basically commemorating the spot where this gentleman, a Matthew Dean, had been robbed by four gentlemen. So I'm finally getting around to doing a little video talking about this robber stone and about the incident that happened. And it happened in back in 1837, so quite a little while ago now. Well, there's actually two stones because. Like I said, this Matthew Dean, he was attacked by four men and, and he's like obviously robbed. And following that, Matthew Dean and he managed to get some friends to help him. They sort of chased the, these four robbers. And one of the robbers, he sort of, during the chase, he died, sort of not like on another part of this, on the Salisbury Plains. And there's a stone marking where that particular gentleman died. So there, there is two stones. Now the second stone where the robber died, that's sort of more on military ground. So you can't really get to that particular one, you know, because it's on like sort of private military land and all the rest. But the robber stone where the incident happened, you know, like I said, that's on the side of a main road. So it is easy to get to, but like I said, it's a bit of a main road. So... <laughs> If you can, yeah, so if you can park up, you can park up nearby, and you can walk along the verge to look at this stone, you know. But got to bear in mind, this uh, loads of traffic going by. So, and I said back in twenty twelve, some locals wrote this little book. It's uh, about the incident and goes into lots of detail and all the rest. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a talk. Well, just give a bit of the information, but I I do. If you want to know more, I do recommend get this book. It's a Robber Stone by Lynn Dyson and Quentin Goggs. Yeah, so yeah. But anyway, if I can find the right page, because of these two stones, they've got their own like inscriptions on them. Now, what I'm gonna do is, oh. If you want to go and see the stone, this stone itself, yeah, you can feel free to pause, and that's where it's located at. And I think they give the location of the second stone as well. There we go. Oh, that's the second stone where I can where the robber died, one of the robbers. So if you want to pause and get those details. Well, like I said, that is on MOD land, so not normally open to the public. Yeah. But the the first stone, the the robber stone. Well, I'm going to read because it's got the inscription in the book, so I'm going to read that from the book. So it's saying, at this spot, Mister Dean of Imber was attacked and robbed by four highwaymen in the evening of. October 21st, 1839. After a spirited pursuit of three hours, one of the felons, Benjamin Corcloff, fell dead on Chittam Down. 
Thomas Saunders, George Waters and Richard Harris were eventually captured and were convicted at the ensuing quarter sessions at Devizes and transported for the term of 15 years. This monument is erected by public, by public subscription as a warning to those who presumptuously think to escape the punishment God has threatened against thieves and robbers. Um, like I said, the memorial stone for the Benjamin Colclough, who died. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this surname right. <laughs> well, like I said, there's an inscription on that stone as well. So I'm going to, again, hope you don't mind me reading from the book. The inscription on that stone goes as follows. This monument is erected to record the awful end of Benjamin Colclough a highway robber who fell dead on this spot in attempting to escape his pursuers after robbing Mr. Dean of Imber in the evening of October 21st, 1839, and was buried at Chitton without funeral rites. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them. Proverbs 21.7 The three companions in iniquity, Thomas Saunders, George Waters and Richard Harris were captured and sentenced at the ensuing quarters session at Devizes for transportation for the term of 15 years. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. Oh. So that's the sort of the instant basic nuts and bolts of it, the sort of the inscriptions on the stones. Now, I have jotted down some little notes. I'm going to twist me around, guys, right? So, oh, as you can see, guys, got me little laptop. So, I'm going to be referring to me notes a bit. I'm sure you guys won't mind me doing that, will you? At least it will save me trying to remember things from the top of me head. Yeah, because uh, as you guys know, my memory's not always exactly brilliant. So, <laughs> I am yeah, referring to notes a lot more nowadays. So, yes. But it was, yeah, quite an interesting little story. Because, I mean, Matthew Dean was just making his way home to Seagram's Farm at Imber from Devizes Market. And he'd been attacked by these four men. And they dragged him off his horse to the ground. And from his pockets, they took three £20 notes from the North Welts Bank. And that's just over £5,000 in 2012 money. The reason I say 2012 money is because that's when this book was written. And then uh, it sort of gives a sort of comparison for the date when the book was written. But anyway, yeah. So they stole three £20 notes, which is like over five, 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 get me words out there, £5,000. And from another pocket, a sovereign and a half in gold and £2 in silver. And then the robbers then ran off like towards West Lavington. Now, Matthew Dean, he managed to get help from a few other local people to help catch the robbers. And I said there was a period of about three hours when they're having a spirited pursuit of the guys around the plane. And at, at the end of the three hours, two of the robbers, Thomas Sanders and George Waters, were captured. They were escorted to the Lamb Public House in West Lavington. They were given into the charge of the local constables. The next morning, that would be the morning of the 22nd, the body of Benjamin Colclough was found by James Morgan, one of the pursuers of the pre previous evening. And he, Benjamin's death certificate states that he was a 35-year-old hawker and that he died from a rupture of a vessel on the brain produced by overexertion in running away to escape justice. Now, not long after that, Richard Harris, who the fourth robber, he was apprehended. So him and the other two robbers that had been captured the previous evening, they were kept in Devizes prison pending their trial. Um, obviously, the trial happened and all three men were found guilty of the robbery. And their punishment was 15 years transportation, leaving aboard the convict ship Lord Lindock for Tasmania and uh, 
sort of the prison convict chef. God put me teeth back in <laughs> some of these words. I'm tripping over them. So the convict ship left for Tasmania on the 5th of September 1840 and arrived on the 5th of February 1841. And like I said, the... Um, the convict ship that they were transported on, the Lord Lindock, it was a ship that started life as an East India merchant ship. Uh, the voyage the voyage over to Tasmania, there was a journal kept by the ship's surgeon, Thomas W. MacDonald, and it gives a little insight into the journey. I thought I'd, what I thought I'd do is I'd just so mark out the general daily routine that these sort of convicts would have had to endure on the ship. So at half five in the morning, cooks were let out to prepare the breakfast. And then at 6 a.m. prisoners were allowed on deck by division to wash and receive their daily allowance of provisions. And at seven o'clock, beds were rolled away and lower decks swept clean. And at 7.30, sick were visited. Eight o'clock in the morning was breakfast time, following which the prison deck was thoroughly swept and ventilated, and then schools were formed on deck. Midday was dinner time, 1pm lime juice and wine were served, and then it was school again till 4pm, which was tea time, and between tea and sunset, rational amusement was allowed. So that's what a general day would have looked like for convicts so on the like convict ships going out, going abroad and that. So like I said, the three offenders, they were taken to Tasmania. And there's a little bit of an information as to what happened to them once they'd been transported. So Thomas Saunders, he kept getting into trouble while out in Tasmania. So for the first six years or so, up until 1847, he was constantly kept in probation stations because he was always getting into trouble and all the rest. And it was in June 1847 when he finally received his first ticket of leave. But then on the 31st of December 1850, he died. Uh, Richard Harris, one of the other robbers, he was regularly in trouble and getting whipped for it. And, but in 18, that was that was the first three years that he was out there. They were regularly getting into trouble. In 1844, though, his monthly report started getting better. It was in November of that year he was recommended for a ticket of leave. So three years before Thomas Saunders got his first ticket of leave. But in 1845, Richard Harris attempted suicide. Now, the visiting, visiting magistrate thought it was a fake attempt and, as a result, sentenced him to six months' hard labour in chains. Which makes me uh, just go to show how rough times were then. Attempt to commit suicide and, as a result, you get punished by six months in hard labour. Now, Richard Harris, he was given further tickets of leave in 1847 and 1849. He got married in 1850 to a Marianne Montgomery and in 1852 he was given a conditional pardon but I mean there's no records of his death in Tasmania so I don't know where or when he died. Now George Walter Waters the other robber he had an uneventful time in Tasmania rarely getting into any trouble uh, from 18, April 1843 onwards, so within two years of, in about two years of landing in Tasmania, he was sent out to work on different farms in the area. He was given a ticket of leave in 1847 and a conditional pardon on the 2nd of September 1851. Now as for Matthew Dean, the gentleman that was robbed, at the time of the attack in 1839, he was nearly 60 and already sort of quite well off. In 1851, he was farming 868 acres of farm and employing 30 men. You know, so, I mean, that's a huge area to be farming. Now, he, he died in Imber on the 13th of April, 
1866, aged 84, leaving an estate valued between eight to ten thousand pounds, which is a spending power of about five hundred thousand pounds as of 2012, when this book was written. So I'm not sure what this what that spending power would be in today's money, 2024. But I mean to have an estate that would be valued at half a million pounds as of 2012, as you can see, Matthew Dean, he was quite a well-to-do man. And I said, that's just a sort of a condensed version of the story, quite a condensed bit of information there. This book that I've, I've got, it's got a, a lot more information. So if you want to know a, a lot more about the people involved, about Matthew Dean, about the four men who robbed him. And if you want to know more about the people who helped Matthew Dean capture the four robbers, I would recommend getting this little book to you because, it, like I said, it's quite an interesting little read. It's not a thick book, so it's quite quick and easy to get through. Very informative. Yeah. That's just one little story of like highwaymen in the early, well, no, it would have been the highwaymen in the mid 19th century in Wiltshire area. Uh, about a month or two ago, Open Minded Wanderer did a video on highwaymen in general in the Wiltshire area. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to her video her highway men's video in the description of this one so if you want to see if you want to see hear stories of other highway men in the Welcher area click on that link and go and watch her video highly recommend it well I highly recommend all of her videos she, she does some good content so yeah definitely if you haven't already subscribed to her channel I highly recommend it it's a good one I like watching her videos so yeah definitely go and do that Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Like I said, it's a bit of a different video. It's not on location. And you're actually getting to see a little snapshot of a, my one of my little rooms. It's, this is my little hideaway room where I come to do reading. As, as you can see, I've got loads and loads of oh, books. Yeah, so this is where I quite like to come and chill out. I've recently got this table set up with my laptop and all the rest. So now I can do more than just reading. I can come and sort of do a bit of laptop work. Just junk over there. I've got to sort that corner right. <laughs> yeah, sort that cabinet out as well. No drinks in that cabinet. <laughs> I'm just using it as a storage space. <laughs> but it's quite nice having this little table here. Because I'm like, oh, if I pan you around, that's a bit of a view from the window. Ah, lovely views. Anyway, guys, yeah, so going slightly off tangent. No, nothing to do with highway men, that. <laughs> so anyway, guys, yes, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I've got the choice of going back to work tomorrow, so it'll be a few days before, probably the weekend before I do another one. But anyway, guys, look forward to seeing you then whenever my next video is. And in the meantime, guys, as usual, stay safe, take care, God bless.